Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're going to do a brief uh, video on the uh, two knights variation in the French uh, defense. This was a, a user or a subscriber suggestion, uh, Greg Jordan. Uh, he had uh, was the first to let us know who the player was, the random chess player of the day was, uh, in one of the earlier videos, uh, which was Susan Polgar. And um, like I said before, if you are the first one to uh, <clears throat> to tell us who the anonymous chess player is, then uh, feel free to, to message me and, uh, you know, on a line or a variation or something that you uh, would like to see. Now, if you have gotten it already, you know, give it some time before you, uh, you know, put another suggestion in, you know, like, uh, don't come like every day and... <laughs> you know, guess guess the players every day. I want everybody to get a chance uh, to participate, and also that gives me a chance to just see, you know, what uh, you know people like out there as far as their chess preferences. So right above me, there's another random chess player. Now I don't even know who this one is. This is a picture, a, a nice picture taken from the Millionaire Chess Open. So um, good luck uh, with with that one. But we're gonna get right into this. Uh, opening the uh, two nice variation of the French defense now hmm what can I say about this opening I not a big fan of it but uh, let's let's look at it and uh, you can judge for yourself so e4 e6 of course is the French and instead of the normal uh, d4 which to me is is the best is uh Knight of three is played, and then after d5, then you have knight c3, and thus uh, the two knights. Now, right away, let me just say that after this move, knight f3, black can just easily transpose into a Sicilian defense. Uh, now, normally, of course, if you play the French, maybe you're not going to play the Sicilian. But if I'm if I'm white and studying this line, I mean just that alone, I you, just knowing this information alone makes me shy away from it because that is just extra extra work that you have to do in preparation because you have to prepare for the French and the Sicilian. Okay, so that's the first uh, turn off right there. But for those people that you know they're gonna stick to the French. They play d5, and of course, this has a great reputation uh, for black, and it should, and you, you'll see why. Um, white only scores about 30% from from this position. Um, from this position right here after knight, uh, knight f3, excuse me, knight c3. Uh, and I believe the reason why is because the lack of participation in the center uh, from the C pawn, and many of these French lines, uh, black, excuse me, white needs the C pawn uh, to participate at some level. Whether the pawns are doubled, as in the uh, Venar uh, variation, or uh, the knight is held back, you know, as in the Tarish on D2 or B1, uh, this C pawn is usually very valuable in assisting white in uh, maintaining his center, especially since black has his C pawn free to attack the d pawn so let's look at um, some lines here okay now so you have e4 uh, e6 d4 knight f3 and um, let's go <coughs> excuse me knight c3 and black here can play either d4 or knight f6. Those are like his uh, strongest lines. I'm looking at my notes here. So, for example, knight f6. Attacking this pawn right away. The play usually goes e4. Knight f d7. <clears throat> d4. c5. Of course, you have transpositional possibilities here. In, into the advanced French variation, etc. So c5, d takes c5, knight c6, just piling on against the center. Bishop f4, 
Knight takes c5. Bishop d3. Bishop e7. Castles. Castles. Rook e1. And a6. And black is just fine. And eventually, um, black will be looking forward to uh, getting rid of this uh, pawn on e5 uh, with moves like f6, uh, etc. Let's go back. <clears throat> um, let's see. Another uh, try often um, that white tries at the d5. It's just to, um, again, just to let you know if, if just E5 here, you just transpose into, you know, advanced variation, um, you know, so that's not really nothing to, uh, worry about for black. Exchanging just goes into an exchange variation. Um, again, nothing to worry about. So just sticking with these lines here. So for it, for example, uh. Matter of fact, let me just show you here. So, for instance, you got e5, c5, d4, knight c6, c3. There's your advanced variation. And after e5, c5. D4, let's say you want to avoid the advanced variation, you play this move, bishop d3. After d4, knight c6, and you want to avoid the advance, so you play this uh, gambit type continuation. It's nice for black just to play knight takes d4. Knight takes d4. C takes d4, and the reason why you're trading down here is because uh, white has uh, sacrificed the pawn, gambited the pawn, so you want to try to uh, weaken his attack. His attacking potential, that is. Not that he has an attack, but the potential. Knight e7, knight d2, knight c6, the pressure here. And this is just a sample line, of course, bishop d7, say h3. Queen c7 more pressure there. Knight to f3. Bishop e7. Bishop f4. H6. H6 is good to uh, alleviate the pressure off the uh, light squares. Because that's where, uh, you know, in these king side attacks, that's where white wants to be able to play. Play these moves like knight g5 and, um, you know, attack on the light squares, especially this uh, vulnerable h7 pawn h6 and a3 preventing this move and then h6 has the double um idea of uh, not only uh, alleviating pressure off the light squares but planning on playing g5 notice the black king has not committed itself yet so you could go over here and start this early attack so again black has no worries after this early uh, E5 uh, continuation here. Um, another continuation that um, Black, uh, let's see, where are we at? After E5, C5, another continuation that um, White will try to do is sacrifice a pawn right here, uh, like in the Evans Gambit. And the idea is just to distract, um, you know, Gambit a pawn away, distract uh, Black's protection in the center here, and build up a strong center, and then for White just to concentrate his attack over here on the uh, king side. So, for example, b4, c takes b4, a3, kind of like a, a Benko Gambit, right? In reverse. Okay, so now there's no pressure on the D pawn. 
knight c6, c3, bishop d7, and then let's say, for example, bishop d3. Black's whole idea is to execute this move here. And here he can play b5. And if takes, the idea is just to play here with this little tactic. And then you just come back like that. So bishop b5 is no good there. It's playable, but it's no no good. Um, so instead of that, if knight takes a3, then just simple simply a6. And what else can we? Yeah, after bishop uh, here. B5. So instead of instead of uh, that, if castles, then just continue on B4. C takes B4. Then you drop this move in here. A2. Rook takes A2, and what that does is bring the rook to a bad square. And the idea is to hit these two pieces at the same time. So rook takes A2, and then knight B4. Again, you're gonna get get this powerful light square bishop out of the way so b4 although interesting uh with with good play black black is uh just just better okay so this this early e5 uh all, although interesting is uh in my opinion just not adequate uh uh enough of course there's transpositional possibilities but um you know just if you're playing the two knights and trying to you know get to you know like two knights type of positions um i don't really think it's uh you know something that's going to keep the black player uh up at night <clears throat> so moving on from e5 just this early e5 we go into this two knights proper uh knight c3 and I'll give you an example here. Again, we have knight f6, just attacking. And then now you have this, and then you have this line I showed you earlier. Knight e4 is also possible. e4, c5, d takes, again, knight c6. And I just think that black just has, you know, just a good equal game. I don't see any, um, you know, any kind of edge for white here. Castle, castle. Rookie one. Whoops. Rookie one and then a six. Another good move for black, instead of knight f6, is just to play d4, knight ce2, and then c5, and then if c3, then you have this move uh, knight f6, and then d3. Because the exchange, because this pawn is attacked, the exchange really doesn't um, do too much here. Uh, for instance, you know, just exchange and everything. Because then white, white just has an isolated pawn, which is, uh, you know, nothing, <laughs> nothing to worry about. <laughs> Again, black is, you know, just good. So, d3 here. Knight c6. Where else to put the bishop? g3. e5. Bishop g2. Bishop e7. Castles. Castles. 
H3 and 98. And this actually occurred in the game, uh, let me look at my notes, uh, uh, Saitlin uh, Fabisovic. This is from the Russian uh, Championship 1967. So old game. And um, to me, White's play can't really be any more, um, you know, better than 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 it is here. Uh, you know, he just has to play in the slow style, you know, eventually maneuvering for, you know, maybe F4 break, possibly. Or if this gets locked, a B4 break. Um, Black's game is extremely comfortable. There's really uh, nothing... Nothing for a white to write home about. And this, to me, this is the reason why the, the score is so low uh, for white in this. Again, the score, the score is like 30% or 28%. And again, statistics don't win games. But it's just that it allows it allows black too much leeway in the opening. You're not putting enough pressure on black. So black is just able to basically uh, take over the game. With his uh, pawn preponderance in, in the center. Especially after he put the knight on c3. Blocking the uh, c-pawn. Um, so. I will have to give that opening a thumbs down. If if I'm if I'm black. And somebody plays that. Uh, plays that. I'm happy. If it plays this, this variation. I'm very happy. Uh, and again. I think knight f6 is, is good. And also. E5 for black. So black has two excellent uh, choices. And when I started researching this line, I didn't even, you know, I didn't have a plan to uh, make, you know, a plan to make some type of video, you know, pro, you know, for the black side, you know, like pro black or for the other side. It just happened to work out like that. And uh, the, the line seems uh, very uh, uh, suspect to me. So that's my take on the... Uh, uh, four knights uh, variation, you know, gambits included. I don't think there's really, uh, excuse me, two knights variation. I don't think that there is uh, really anything there that can, uh, you know, really make this line any type of uh, fierce attacking line uh, for white. White can, uh, of course, be equal, get a decent position, and seek to outplay his opponent, but uh, this is... Uh, this line is it should be uh, the least worry for, uh, for black. All right. So that is it for this video. There's some links below uh, if you're interested uh, in in this line for white. I just want to know how to play the French defense in general. Um, uh, again, please like and subscribe. And uh, if you know who this chess player is, uh, please let us know. And I'll see you soon on the next video.